Item number SCP-3773 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-3773-14 is contained in a small animal containment cell on sub-level 13 of Site-87. Enrichment activities with SCP-3773-14 are to be carried out by containment staff at least three times per day. SCP-3773-14 diet does not differ substantially from non-anomalous felines. However, all manifestations of SCP-3773-14 are lactose intolerant. Outside materials such as pet brushes and toys are to be fully decontaminated prior to their introduction to SCP-3773-14 to prevent a possible repeat of incident 3773-13. In the event of SCP-3773-14's death, SCP-3773 is to be kept in storage for no more than 60 days. A new cat is to be introduced to SCP-3773 and designated SCP-3773-15 with the containment procedures appropriately updated when SCP-3773's anomalous effects manifest. Description SCP-3773 is a collar made of linen rope. Chemical analysis of SCP-3773 has shown that the fibers of linen contain hairs from at least 200 distinct domesticated felines. The oldest specimen of hair identified dates to approximately 2025 BCE. A pair of brass claps has been added to SCP-3773, possibly due to the wear of the original binding mechanism. SCP-3773 exhibits a mild cognito hazard. If an individual interacts with SCP-3773 with the intent to destroy it, they will place it down on a nervous safe surface and disregard it when they are out of sight of SCP-3773. SCP-3773's anomalous properties manifest when it is affixed to the neck of a member of the species. Felis Catus Designated SCP-3773 Number SCP-3773 cannot be removed until the death of the SCP-3773 Number instance, and its dimensions will grow and shrink so that SCP-3773 is always fit close to the skin of the SCP-3773 number instance without causing discomfort. The SCP-3773 number instance will begin to show biological changes consistent with felines that have worn SCP-3773 in the past. Update: Wu's TNA has come into contact with SCP-3773. Note, see Incident 3773-13. It is estimated that SCP-3773 can store the biological information of at least 18 different cats at a time. SCP-3773 number instances show a capability to alter themselves to have traits of several different felines, seemingly at will. Fur color, eye color, length, and presence of a tail and biological sex are all variable in SCP-3773 number instances. However, all instances of SCP-3773 number are uniformly lactose intolerant, even if the felines SCP-3773 number takes the form of were not. These shifts in form are accompanied by changes in behavior, including preference in food, changes in responses to stimuli, such as petting and high-pitched noises, and responding to different names. Litters birthed by SCP-3773 number will have offspring genetically identical to felines currently stored in SCP-3773. The default form of SCP-3773 number instances seems to be a chimeric mixture of all genetic information currently present in SCP-3773. Fur will often appear to be in a patchwork pattern. Eye colors are often heterochromatic. And in some cases, several tails, all functional, can appear. Addendum, Incident, 3773-13 
Dr. Cassandra Pike, a parasolologist at Site 87, was given permission to bring items that belong to her cat for the purposes of enriching SCP-3773-14, including a hairbrush, toy mice, and a dingle ball. Dr. Pike's cat died in August 2015 under unknown circumstances. Dr. Pike was allowed to interact with SCP-3773-14 for the purposes of studying behavior. In January of 2016, the following audio was recorded in Site 87's containment wing. Hey Cassie, here to play with Mongo? Note, a nickname given to SCP-3773-14 by containment staff. Today's my last day with them, actually. For a while, at least. Flying out to Oregon to help Dr. Hendricks get accumulated with his new job? Go right in. Sound of the buzzer, followed by the containment airlock opening, followed by approximately 70 seconds of silence before in-cell intercom is buzzed. Jake, you have to see this right now. What's the matter? 377314, Mongrel, whatever you want to call it, it looks just like my cat. My dead cat. It looks just like Oliver. Sounds like him too. That's impossible. Your cat was never in contact with 3773. It couldn't have gotten its genetic signature. And why? Why does it look like my cat? What the freak? There have to be millions of tortoise-shell cats out there, Cassandra. Calm down. Several seconds of silence. How physically detailed are the things that 3773 makes? Why do you ask? Oliver had a rib that never healed right and I got him. Some jackass kicked him or something. Make a big bump in his right side under the skin. I want to see if it's there. Go ahead. Hey, hey Ollie. Oliver, come here Ollie. Oh my god. Jake, it came when I called his name. Come here. Come to Mama. Come here. Ten seconds of nonsensical noises from Dr. Pike, showing affection to SCP-3773-14, before ceasing suddenly. Oh my god. It's there. The bump's there. His little broken rib. What the hell, Jake? What the hell? Subsequent testing showed that exposure to any feline DNA, not necessarily felines that have worn SCP-3773, has a potential chance of SCP-3773 cataloging it. To date, three felines have been cataloged in SCP-3773 in this manner, including Dr. Pike's own cat. Addendum Following Dr. Pike's return from Oregon in February 2016, her work with SCP-3773-14 resumed. SCP-3773-14 would often take the form of Dr. Pike's deceased cat, much to her distress. For the purposes of this document, this form of SCP-3773-14 is designated SCP-3773-14-A. Dr. Pike requested a full-time assignment to SCP-3773-14's research staff for a period of three months, suspending two other non-time-sensitive projects. This request was approved by Dr. Adam Lawson, current head of Cryptozoological and Parazoological Studies at Site-87. However, Dr. Pike's behavior turned highly abnormal after one week of study. Dr. Pike spent increasing amounts of time with SCP-3773-14 and at one point fell asleep in SCP-3773-14 cell, risking the containment of two other anomalous items stored on the same level. For this, Dr. Pike was reprimanded, but did not have her claims resented. The following conversation is recorded to have taken place between Dr. Pike and a significant other Dr. Claude Maddings, at 1.12 a.m. on March 19th, 2016. Cassandra, where are you going? It's the middle of the night. I'm just going to the mire. Note, 
a chain of super center stores exclusively located in the Midwestern United States. I have a craving for Twinkies. They're the only place in town that's open this late. Going to the grocery store doesn't require security pass, Cass. Signing out with a night receptionist does. The elevator to service is that way. You're heading down to containment again, aren't you? What the hell do you want from me, Claude? That's my cat down there. You remember what I did when he died? He was the only good thing in my life for a long time. And I have a chance to see him again. To say goodbye? What do I want from you? I want you to get to infirmary ASAP. You've clearly been affected by something. What do you mean? This obsession you have. The worship of something that looks like your dead cat. It's not natural, hon. I think you've been rammed. Note, a colloquialism used in Site 87 to indicate exposure to a cognito hazard. I haven't been rammed, Claude. You know what one looks like. It doesn't look like this. I... I just want to say goodbye to Ollie, okay? That's all. There's an easy way to test it then. Five words. Seriously? Fine, say them. Does the black moon howl? At this point, Dr. Pike's vocal patterns radically change, and the recording picks up the presence of metal shaking against metal in a musical manner. It never stopped the sun from smiling. She wore a smile to rival its brightness before her beloved passed into a draught. For her heart grew heavy and hardened. She deserves another chance to say goodbye, just as you gave her another chance. What oh, the frick? Dr. Pike's focal pans return to normal, and she appears ignorant of the above. Satisfied? Dr. Maddings runs for the security alarm and summons agents to Dr. Pike's location. Following this, Dr. Pike was restricted to a low-level humanoid containment cell for a period of at least three months. As an anti cognito hazardous treatment was developed for SCP-3773's anomaly. Dr. Pike's security clearance for SCP-3773 has been rescinded. Addendum Interview with Dr. Pike the following interview was conducted one month into Dr. Pike's isolation for cognito hazard treatment. Dr. Harold West. Beginning interview with Cassandra Pike. Cognito hazard test. Does the black moon howl? It never stopped the sun from smiling. Note. Analysis of the recording detected a change in Dr. Pike's speech patterns similar to those detected in her original interaction with Dr. Maddings. Cognito has it still present. According to Dr. Bricker, that response is consistent with the Cognito hazard originating from Egypt, last seen in. <sighs> this is all over a cat. Pardon? All I wanted to do was tell what was the one good thing in my life for a good five years that I loved him. I cannot arrange for Dr. Maddings to visit. <laughs> I mean, other than him, he, when I come to Sloth's Pit, this site, do you remember what happened? The cold storage incident, everyone remembers. When I was holed up at home trying to recover, when the site was being repaired, I kept seeing this cat in my backyard. He kept on coming to the door asking for food, begging like Oliver Twist. He always wanted more. He came into my room one day and he just stayed. Then Oliver just vanished one day. I let him out. He never came back. I found him in some hedges a few days later. And God, Harry, I'm over like. Have you been taking your medication? Daily. They're giving me too big of a dose. Can you see about adjusting it? I'm supposed to take half of what I get and keep urging me to take the whole thing. 
Of course, Cassandra. Dr. West stays silent for several seconds before sighing. <sighs> Speaking candidly, everyone knows everyone here, and most of us are concerned about you and what's going on. 3773 is one of the few items here that's a proper skip, and to see it affect a researcher like this. What if there's no hazard? The five wet test disproves that quite soundly. Engineer proved Count Needle has a detection mean. You heard the recording. Did that sound like me? I think I got rammed, but not in a Count Needle hazard way. I think that something messed with me to get me in here. Why would this force to have a motive to do that? Because it wants me to be alone, so I can finally do what I want. Following this, Dr. Pike become unresponsive to questions. Dr. West concluded the interview. Addendum Video Log The following is a transcript of a video recording taken in Dr. Pike's observation cell on June 3rd. 2016. 22 hours, 5 minutes. Camera malfunction. Video restored 3 minutes later. Audio unavailable for the duration. 22 hours, 8 minutes. Dr. Pike stirs in his sleep and sits up to face the door to her chamber. 22 hours, 9 minutes. Door to the containment chamber opens into a white light. The exterior cameras of Dr. Pike's cell show the door closed. 22 hours, 11 minutes. A pair of felines emerge from the light. One of them resembles SCP-3773-14A. 3773 The other is an unknown entity resembling a black house cat, with a tail approximately 0.5 meters long, a golden mask on its face, and numerous eyes. Video resolution is poor but the latter entity appears to be wearing SCP-3773, while the former is not. 2212, SCP-3773-14A jumps on Dr. Pike's bed and begins interacting with her affectionately. Dr. Pike is seen to be crying and hugging SCP-3773-14A. Dr. Pike appears to be addressing the unknown 3773 number entity. 22 hours, 30 minutes. Between the two timestamps, Dr. Pike and SCP-3773-14A are seen interacting and playing, with the unknown 3773 number entity producing strands of rope and balls from behind itself for SCP-3773-14A and Dr. Pike to play with. At 22 hours, 30 minutes, SCP-3773-14A jumps off of Dr. Pike and makes its way to the door. Dr. Pike walks after it, picking it up and kissing it on the forehead. 22 hours, 34 minutes. Both SCP-3773-14A and the unknown SCP-3773 number entity depart, with the door closing behind them. Dr. Pike returns to her bed and sleeps, and is seen holding something in her left hand. Upon review of the footage the next morning, footage SCP-3773-14 cell was inspected and showed it sleeping in the corner of its cell. Following this incident, SCP-3773-14 has not resumed the form of Dr. Pike's former cat. Dr. Pike herself was interviewed by a member of the site security following this. Do we remember this incident? I remember it, but I can't believe it happened. Then I woke up with you on my door and cat hair on my clothes. Does the black moon howl? They too expunged. Cognito hazard seems to be absent. If it was there in the first place, we're still going to keep you under observation for the duration. Do you know what this entity that was with your cat was? I think I have some idea, but... You're going to have to run it by the mythology department on sub-level 5 for me to be positive. She kept on making toys for me to play with him. She even gave me one of his favorite balls. 
I actually managed to say goodbye to him. Do you know how good closure feels, Agent Elwell? No comment. It felt good. Oliver's not the first cat I had, but he's probably one of the best. I was kind of lost between using him and my tip with Claude. Now, I feel like I can take on anything. Let's start with you taking on counseling. After observation is done, we're sure that the, for the sake of simplicity, the cognito hazard is out of your system. You're on psych leave, three months, by order of Director Vice. You're not to come back to zip code for any reason barring a major emergency until then. Your family? Parents and brother in Ohio? Good opportunity to visit them. You're gonna need to sign a memetic geese, of course. Gag order, right? Can't lap to the folks. <clears throat> Is that everything? One last thing. The video showed you holding something in your hand when you went to sleep. What was it? I have it right here. One moment. SCP-3773-A designate a non-anonymous leather collar with a breakaway fastener intended to be worn by house cats. A brass nameplate reading Ubuster is affixed to it.